Nickton is a relaxed man in his 40s, married to a beautiful woman named Amy. That day marks their fifth wedding anniversary. But Nick seems rather distant. It's clear that he's lost interest in his wife. Sounds like his first run with J-Lo. Instead of buying her a gift, he goes to his bar for drinks. The bartender there happens to be his twin sister, Margot. They co-own the bar together. She notices Nick's troubled expression and asks why. He simply says Amy. And the story takes back to the night they first met. Amy, a famous quiz writer, organized a book launch event, and Nick was one of the attendees. They met by chance and bonded over their love for books. Nick was a writer too, though for a small men's magazine. While Amy was beloved by many, they spent the evening exploring the streets of New York City, and Nick's charm and good looks won Amy over. They ended the night with passionate lovemaking. In the present, as Nick continues his stories, he receives a call from his neighbor about his cat being outside. He rushes home to retrieve the cat and finds the front door open. He calls out for Amy but gets no response. He searches the house and discovers a broken glass table, which alarms him, prompting a call for help. Detective Rhonda arrives with her assistant. Investigating the scene, she finds odd blood droplets and, upon seeing Amy's books and recognitions, treats her disappearance as a high-profile case. Later, they all head to the police station, where Nick undergoes tests. Detective Rhonda assures him that they'll find Amy, tracking her credit cards, analyzing forensic evidence, and planning a press conference to seek assistance. Strangely, Nick finds this all amusing. This raises Detective Rhonda's suspicions, so she begins to question Nick. However, Nick struggles to provide answers. He doesn't know Amy's blood type, her favorite food, or even her nickname. All he can say is that Amy didn't have friends and spent most of her time reading books. Honestly, this is pretty much my life with no friends. Moving on, another flashback of Nick and Amy's first marriage anniversary when they were happily in love is shown. They shared public displays of affection and exchanged lavish gifts. Little did they know that their lives would take a turn for the worse. Back in the present, as Detective Rhonda investigates the crime scene, a pregnant woman named Noelle appears, claiming to be Amy's best friend. She lives nearby and has been close to Amy for over a year contradicting what Nick previously said about Amy not having friends. Rhonda decides to interrogate Noelle later and turns her attention to the Dunn residence. Inside the house, the forensic team informs Rhonda that the kitchen floor had been splattered with blood and later cleaned. It's also revealed that the entire house is registered in Amy's name. The next day, the highly anticipated press conference takes place. Amy, being a well-known writer, attracts numerous reporters, and the event is broadcasted live on television. Nick and his in-laws are scheduled to speak. When it's Nick's turn, he half-heartedly says two sentences and even smiles for a photograph. That night, Nick goes to his father's abandoned house to unwind. Detective Rhonda shows up, revealing that she has been tailing him. Nick becomes angry and escorts her out of the house before driving away. In another flashback, the couple is going through a rough patch. Amy documents their struggles in her diary. They've moved to Nick's hometown in Missouri to care for his terminally ill mother and Nick hasn't found a job yet. Amy borrows money from her wealthy parents as they live on a tight budget. Nick, not used to unemployment, spends money recklessly on video games, leading to frequent arguments with Amy. Ah, he reminds me of the real-life Ben Affleck. In the present, it's been two days since Amy's disappearance. Her parents are organizing an event to gather support and search for their daughter, but Nick remains relaxed, even taking selfies with attendees. That night, Nick chooses to stay at his sister Margot's place to escape the paparazzi surrounding him. However, even there, he finds no relief. Mogo watches the news, which questions Nick's seemingly carefree behavior. She confronts him about it, and he angrily tells her he didn't expect this from her. The past two days have been a nightmare, and he just wants a peaceful night's sleep without judgment. Hearing this, Mogo apologizes and goes to sleep. Surprisingly, a young woman enters the house a few hours later and embraces Nick. She turns out to be Nick's girlfriend, Andy. This revelation clarifies that Nick may not be concerned about his wife's disappearance because he's in love with someone else. During the night, Nick and Andy become intimate. Unfortunately, the next morning, Margot discovers them and scolds Nick for keeping secrets. He strikes back by explaining how miserable Amy made him feel. Amy stopped caring for him, and spending time together had become a challenge. That's why he found comfort in someone else who is one of his students, Andy. Shocked, Mogo warns him of the trouble he could face if the authorities find out. She shows Nick that he's making headlines for all the wrong reasons. In another flashback through Amy's diary, it's revealed that she wanted to have a child with Nick, hoping it would mend their ongoing issues. However, Nick strongly disagreed with the idea, leading to an argument in which he accidentally pushed her, causing harm to Amy. While he apologized nonstop, Amy had reached her breaking point. From that day on, she feared for her life and wanted a divorce. However, she knew Nick wouldn't leave her because he wanted her parents' money. In the present, Detective Rhonda receives the forensic report on the blood samples found around the house, confirming it as Amy's. That night, Nick is asked to address a large crowd of Amy's supporters. Suddenly, Amy's supposed best friend, Noelle, appears and accuses him of hiding things. After getting the crowd's attention, she discloses that Amy was actually six weeks pregnant when she disappeared. This revelation shocks Margot, Andy, Amy's parents, and everyone in the crowd. They turn against Nick, 
but the police escort him away to safety. Later that night, Nick, while drinking at home, is confronted by Detective Rhonda with a set of photographs. These photos prove that Amy and Noel were indeed close friends. Rhonda also informs him that the blood in the kitchen belongs to his wife. She concludes that Amy was murdered and only needs to find her body to confirm her theory and potentially arrest Nick. Once Detective Rhonda leaves, Margot questions her distressed brother about Amy's pregnancy. To their surprise, Nick reveals he had no knowledge of it as Amy never wanted to have a baby. At the same time, Detective Rhonda searches Nick's father's house for clues and discovers Amy's half-burnt diary in the furnace. Although she doesn't find a body, this diary raises questions. The story then comes to the day of Amy's disappearance, revealing that Amy herself orchestrated the entire incident. She carefully planned everything to frame her husband for a crime. From Amy's perspective, Nick took everything from her by lying, cheating, and ruining her pride and money. The story then unfolds how she staged the whole scenario. At first, she secretly befriended their most foolish neighbor and invited her home. Amy, aware that Noelle was pregnant, cunningly took her urine sample to create fake medical records at a local hospital. She also filled Noelle's mind with falsehoods about Nick's alleged abuse. Concerning the crime scene, Amy drew blood from her hand and spread it across the kitchen floor, then carelessly cleaned it to leave behind traces for the police. Finally, she fabricated stories in her diary and left it for the authorities. This implies that Nick never harmed her. In truth, she was the one who deceived everyone. As Amy drives away in her car, she reveals she began planning the night she caught Nick cheating on her. In another part of the story, Nick becomes increasingly convinced that his wife is plotting against him. Lacking evidence, he decides to seek legal counsel from Tanner, known as the smartest lawyer in the country. His last name is probably made. Tanner swiftly advises Nick on a few key strategies. To win the case, Nick must first win the public support by tarnishing Amy's reputation. The initial step involves finding someone she wronged in the past and obtaining their testimony. Nick knows just the right person for this. Before Nick, Amy was in a relationship with Daisy Collins, a wealthy man from New York. Initially, they seemed like a perfect match due to their high standards, but Daisy grew possessive, leading to their breakup. Even after their split, Daisy continued to pursue Amy, causing her to file a restraining order against him. To this day, he still sends her letters. Nick uses the address from one of these letters to visit Daisy's mansion. Unfortunately, Daisy is unwilling to speak about Amy. Despite everything Amy has done to him, he remains protective of her. Meanwhile, Amy has lived with her new identity and resides in a quiet neighborhood, avoiding interactions with others. However, one day, she accidentally drops a thick stack of money, which a few neighbors notice. That night, those people attack her and steal her money, but they remain unaware of her identity. Fearing more risk, Amy decides to pack her belongings and leave the area. Without a place to stay, she reaches out to the only person who unconditionally loves her, Daisy Collins. The two meet at a casino, where Amy skillfully manipulates Daisy. She fabricates a story about being forced to flee her home due to Nick's threat to her life. She claims she cannot return because the entire nation would view her as a coward. Daisy readily accepts her story and sees it as an opportunity to reconnect with her. So, he escorts Amy to his secluded private villa equipped with surveillance cameras, assuring her that she won't be discovered. Elsewhere, when their initial plan fails, Tanner advises Nick to go on live television and confess to his extramarital affair. This, he believes, will earn Nick's sympathy, as people generally appreciate honesty. However, on the day of the interview, they face a major setback. Nick's girlfriend, Andy, breaks the news herself, putting Nick in a risky position. Tanner explains that they are now at a disadvantage, and going live on television would be highly dangerous. But Nick assures him that he can handle it. He appears on the interview set, wearing a serious expression, and delivers an emotional confession. While many doubt the authenticity of his confession, Amy, watching from the villa, is impressed. Nick's words, especially when he says, I will love my wife forever, touch her deeply. It's now 21 days since her disappearance, which has caused a nationwide sensation, and Amy plans to return to her husband. However, there's a significant obstacle Daisy expects her to be his wife. He has abandoned his personal life and isolated himself with her in the villa. Amy knows that trying to leave will likely lead to violence or drastic measures from him. She decides to devise a cunning plan. First, she goes into the bathroom, the only area without cameras, and creates rope marks on her wrists to simulate being tied up. For the second step, she injures her private areas and positions herself near one of the cameras to record herself screaming. Later, when Daisy returns home, she loses him into an intimate moment and, while he's distracted, she brutally murders him, like the black widow that she is. Elsewhere, Nick's situation looks terrible as Detective Rhonda has thoroughly examined the entire diary and is on the verge of arresting him. However, one morning, everything changed. Amy appears outside the house, still bearing Desi's blood. This dramatically alters the course of the case transforming Nick from America's most hated man to an innocent one. In the evening, doctors examine Amy and conclude that she has been mistreated by Daisy. Nick suspects she is once again deceiving everyone, but he lacks evidence to prove it. In front of various officials, Amy narrates her traumatic story. She describes how her excessively possessive ex-boyfriend, Daisy, abducted and held her hostage for several weeks. The news spreads like wildfire, 
And once more, Amy becomes America's beloved victim. With the exception of Nick and his sister, Margot, everyone believes her fabricated story. As the story ends, the couple comes back to their home. Nick sees Amy as a killer, but she defends her actions, claiming she did it all to be with him again. However, after all the chaos, Nick is scared to stay with her. He gathers the courage to express his decision to leave, but Amy threatens to destroy his life if he dares. Plus she's pregnant. Nick accepts his grim reality, understanding he's trapped with this unstable person. The movie ends with him putting Amy to sleep and locking her in a room from the outside, signaling his lack of safety and comfort in his own home. What did y'all think of this twisted movie? Amy is truly a black widow. I kinda think she's iconic for it. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.